Welcome to this webinar from the Atlas Wellness Alliance. My name is DJ Chuang, the Executive Director, and each month we create this safe space to talk about Asian American mental health. And this month, our special guest is Carissa Kim, and she will be introducing us and inviting us into a healing group, describing what it is and how it can help you in your healing journey. She is a training facilitator with Trauma Healing Institute, which is a part of American Bible Society. And she's passionate about seeking the healing of heart wounds through encounter and relationship with Jesus in community with others. She lives in Philadelphia. She's married and has uh, some children. So she'll share more of her story. Please welcome her. Thank you, Carissa, for joining us. Thank you, DJ. And thank you, everyone, for making time to join us this evening. Um, thank you, DJ, for also giving me this space to share about something I'm very passionate about, um, seeing more and more of um, God's creation come to experience his healing and his love and, and deeper relationship with Jesus. So before I kind of get into what is a healing group, and what we can expect in healing groups, I actually wanted to share a little bit of, of my personal story, just a part of my own healing journey um, that can kind of help you understand how I got involved in this ministry. Um, so I'm going to take you back to when my kids were really young, um, about two years old and an infant. Um, and for those of you who have lived through that life stage, you may remember um, just a bit of chaos, heightened stress levels. Um, and on, on top of that, we were living overseas. So you know, there's the added stressors of, of language, culture, um, and, I, and I didn't have the kind of natural support network that I might have had in my home country. Um, so with all that, I began noticing a pattern of behavior in myself, and I didn't like it. <laughs> um, and it was the very behavior that I truly disliked about my dad growing up. And um, that behavior was blaming. Um, I remember growing up and my dad would just blame my mom for everything and nothing and um, you know, created a very tense kind of home environment. Um, and those words weren't even directed towards me. Um, anyway, to my utter shock, I felt myself just reproducing this behavior. Um, when the stress levels were high. And, um, you know, if I had to put an image to it, I actually felt kind of this blackness or darkness um, seeping out of my heart and, and mouth um, and directed towards my poor husband. <laughs> um, and no matter how hard I tried to kind of self-manage, I felt I just couldn't control it. Um, and I recognized it was kind of a generational wound um, but I knew that I wanted it to stop with me. I told myself, I will not pass this on to my kids. Um, and so since I have a relationship with God, naturally I turned to him and I remember asking him, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on with me? I had considered myself a pretty patient and even a healed person. So, um, it just, I just really felt out of sorts. Um, and I remember that God, re God responded and he first revealed to me that when I was young, I had witnessed this blaming behavior from my dad to my mom, <clears throat> even though those words weren't directed towards me, that I actually had experienced pain and wounds in my own heart and mind, just as an onlooker observer. And I do remember I had just these feelings of helplessness, you know, being a kid, seeing this kind of injustice or wrongdoing, wanting to rescue or save my mom. 
but just not, you know, not knowing how to or having the voice to do that. Um, and this was an ongoing dialogue with God for weeks and months. And um, I remember God further revealed to me that just like I have a backstory as to where my bl blaming behavior was stemming from, that my dad too has his own story. Um, and I feel like God reveal revealing that to me helps increase compassion in my heart towards my father. And it really helps me along the path of being a little forgiven, eventually. And in our in our relationship, it actually ultimately led to um, reconciliation. And I do want to say that I didn't have a bad relationship with my dad. Um, in fact, if you ask my siblings, they'd probably say that I have the best one of the three of us. But we said it could be so much more. Um, and it could have been a deeper relationship growing up and into adulthood. But you know, it's never too late. And I'm, I'm glad that, that God brought that healing in my own life and, and revealed those things to me and spoke those things to me because it really helps me in, in now having a deeper relationship with my father. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, and, you know, looking back, I, mean, I know that my dad's transition to America as a, as a Korean immigrant was, it was difficult. We had three kids in three years, which now having had two kids, I know is a super courageous feat. Um, you know, he wasn't in his home language, home culture. And I and, and since I've had these conversations with my dad, he's even told me that, you know, for him, adjusting to the new systems in, in the U.S. was very difficult. Um, so I know that back in the 80s and 90s, my dad didn't really have time to dig deeper into his story, um, nor did he have the resources. Um, language was a barrier, um, probably couldn't afford a lot of the English-based resources if those existed. Um, and then even though our family went to church, I wonder if the church even had resources um, to help uh, you know, church family, um, explore just your story and your pain um, more deeply. So even though my dad didn't have the, the time or resources, um, tonight I'm here to tell you all that we do, we do have resources if we are willing to carve out the time to, to for, for exploring our pain. And so tonight, I'm here to introduce one such resource, which is healing groups. Um, I'd like for us to think about what it would look like for the church to come alongside church family and provide spaces where you can talk about your hurt, your wounds, your pain in confidence and without judgments, without adding to one another's pain and pursue healing in Jesus together in community. Because that's essentially what healing groups are. Um, and I think that whether we've been a Christian for 30 years or three days, um, I think we can all agree that all of us carry some amount of heart wounds or emotional wounds or pain and hurts. And I think that we as Asian Americans are particularly good at minimizing our own pain and suppressing or repressing it. Um, and some of us have learned healthy ways to kind of cope and manage, um, while others of us have developed unhealthy ways to cope. Um, and some of that can look like um, or can manifest in the ex explosive bits of rage or anger or isolating yourself or um, escapism, or addictions, whether that be substance abuse, um, pornography, uh, shopping addictions, Netflix addictions, um, there's really no end. And so I remember hearing in a previous seminar or webinar that Asian American Christians are more likely to turn to their churches and spiritual leaders 
before seeking professional secular services. So all the more, church, um, how can we be ready and equipped to provide resources for our church family? So with that, having said all that, um, let's talk a little bit more about what is a healing group. Um, you may have heard of healing groups um, referred to as trauma healing groups. The curriculum that we use comes from the Trauma Healing Institute which is based here locally where I am in Philadelphia. But I personally like to drop the, the word trauma sometimes because of the stigma that it carries, especially among Asian Americans. Um, and in its place, sometimes I'll use the word, the term heart wounds, I think it's a bit more relatable. Um, so yeah, so let's look at how the Trauma Healing Institute defines trauma or heart wounds. Um, I'll just read this for us. The trauma is a wound in the heart and mind that takes a long time to heal. It hurts every part of our lives, how we relate to others, how our body feels, what we think about, and how much we can trust God. And it can make us feel separated from God and others. And trauma or heart wounds can be caused by single events, a prolonged events, or repeated occurrence of events. And while we might often think of trauma as um, sudden or violent experiences like rape or being held up at gunpoint or living through a war, um, it really is so much broader than that. Um, it includes developments in any area of our lives from family, finances, health, and safety that can affect our sense of stability and security. And they often occur in our most formative years of childhood. So I wanna talk a little bit about some examples of heart wounds. I shared one of my own, which was kind of growing up in that, um, what I would call emotionally kind of and verbally abusive um, environment of just that blame, that the blaming behavior, among other things, kind of had created. Um, and that wasn't even directed towards me. But there might be other more direct messaging that um, you may have grown up with, um, such as you know, the message of you're not good enough, uh, or why can't you be like other kids? Um, those are not uncommon with men in different households. And another example of um, heart wounds might be growing up with an absent parent, um, whether that be due to work or travel and one of your parents was not physically present, or it could be they were physically present, but they were emotionally absent, um, or it could be the loss of life of one of your parents. Um, and another example of heart wounds might be growing up having to take on adult life responsibilities early on. And again, this is very common among immigrant um, children. So let's look at now um, what you can expect in a healing group. Um, I kind of already defined what a healing group is, but I'm going to um, just share, read this for you. Um, a healing group is designed to be a safe place where participants are able to share pain with their hearts, listen to others' pain without adding further harm, while walking alongside one another in each other's healing journey. Yeah. And the curriculum that we use, which I said um, comes from the Trauma Healing Institute, combines um, biblical principles with mental health best practices. There are six core lessons that we do, and it's usually about two hours per lesson for a total commitment of 12 hours. And I wanna be really clear here to say that healing groups um, are not a therapy session and they in no way replace professional care, whether that be counseling or medication. Um, so you can think of healing groups kind of more like first responders. The first line of help 
for those around us who are seeking healing of their heart wounds. It's also a very reproducible model. Um, you don't need to hire a healing group coordinator or facilitator. We all know pastors are overburdened. And so you can really think of healing groups as empowering lay people within the church to walk alongside each other um, in their healing journeys. Um, and really the first step of uh, to healing groups is, is joining one, just participating in one. Um, and we're going to be inviting you to one and we'll share the details of that um, later tonight. But really taking that first step and there's no commitment after that, you know, you might take it and be like, oh, that was good, but I don't have the time or capacity to run with this at my church or in my organization right now. And you can set it aside and just see how God leads you. You know, there's no commitment that now that you've taken a healing group, you must now run like five healing groups a year, nothing like that. Um, it really is just how, how the Holy Spirit leads you. Um, the other great thing is you don't have to come up with any material, um, the curriculum down to every discussion question and even the how many minutes to designate per question are all laid out for you. So it's really good. Um, this is a great resource for folks who don't want to reinvent the wheel and um, yeah, just want to kind of integrate something pretty seamlessly into what you have going on at your church already. Um, it also follows a group-based or participatory model. And by that, I mean the facilitator asks questions and then just creates space for participants to respond in both large and small groups. And there's really a variety of, of exercises and activities. There are, are stories we read together, we discussions. Um, there are art exercises to kind of get both sides of your brain um, activated. There, we compose laments. Um, there's individual reflection times. There's role playing and skits, um, putting into practice what we're learning. So it's very interactive. Um, it is not the facilitator going through a slide deck, nothing like a lecture. Um, so it really doesn't put a lot of burden on the facilitator in that respect. Um, yeah. And you can offer it. Um, as a small group or a cell group, if you have some a, minute, a small group ministry already um, in your church or organization, you could just offer it as one of the many options. And then finally, <laughs> it's free. Um, there is no, we do not charge anyone to participate in a healing group. Um, there is a book that accompanies the, you know, the curriculum, but um, actually, we encourage folks not to buy it before the healing group because all the materials are provided for you. Um, if we're looking at a story together, I usually print that out um, or we'll project it depending on if it's an online or in-person group. So everything's provided. Um, but if you do want to buy the book at the end, um, I think it's like $7.99. So it's not cost prohibitive at all very accessible. Um, so let me introduce the six core lessons. Um, so this is not the order that um, the lessons are laid out in the book, but this is the this is one of the orders. I think this is one of two orders that is acceptable with um, the Trauma Healing Institute. And this is the way when I was a participant in a healing group that it was facilitated in this order. And I, I've kind of stuck with it. I like it. Um, so the first lesson is, what is a wound of the heart? We're defining heart wounds. We compare physical wounds, emotional uh, with heart wounds. Um, yeah, and then the second lesson, we talk about what can help our heart wounds heal. And this lesson is a lot about how can we listen well to one another's stories without adding further harm. And then lesson three is, what happens when someone is grieving? We look at the grief journey um, and we really 
emphasize the importance of, of going through that grief journey and not bypassing any of those stages. And then lesson four, we are discussing the kind of all um, important apologetics question of um, if the Bible tells me that God loves me no matter what, then why am I suffering? Why is it? Why? Why am I in pain? Why is there suffering? Um, by week four, the group has really developed, typically develops the tighter bonds, and so it really lends for a great discussion. And then in lesson five, we are bringing our pain to the cross. Um, this is a lot more individual reflection time and sharing in pairs or small, small groups. And then we actually have a ceremony of bringing our pain to the cross to Jesus. And then finally, in lesson six, um, we talk about forgiveness. How can we forgive others? How can we forgive and release um, the people that have, have brought pain in our lives or hurt us? us, um, whether intentionally or unintentionally, how can we release them to God? Um, and then below, you'll see that I've um, there are optional lessons. We don't typically do these unless someone, unless, well, it kind of depends on the facilitator's schedule and the participants, but I've had groups where they it's ended after six or seven weeks and they we're like, oh, is that it? And they wanted more than um, depending on our schedule. If we had the time, we would do some of those optional lessons. So um, they're kind of very specific. So it was just whoever was interested in that topic joined in on that day. For the six core lessons, though, we do ask that the participants um, attend each of them because they really do build on each other and it is building. You know, we're building trust within the group um, and and don't want people to kind of come in and out of the group in those six um, weeks. Um, well, in the kind of remaining time, I actually wanted to give you a sense of what a typical discussion or exercise might be like in a healing group. So we're going to do an activity that we actually do in one of our lessons um, that's going to help us to visualize um, healing, uh, sorry, heart wounds a little bit more. Um, so if you, um, if you feel comfortable, um, I want us to close our eyes and I'd like for you to imagine a physical wound. So a very, a very deep cut on your arm. And then DJ, if you could scribe for us, but you, he's doing that offline. Um, yeah, what do you see? And you can you can take yourself off of mute. Um, so you see, so you have a very deep cut on your arm. What do you see? What are you gonna do? What do you feel? <laughs> yeah. I actually see bone. Mm -hmm and there's a lot of bleeding mm -hmm. um there's a sense of panic mm -hmm. um but then i feel like i need to kick into gear and fix it and so crazy me i'll look for a tourniquet or even a needle and thread and try to sew it up myself wow thank you david um, how about others? Yeah, what do you see? What are you going to do? How do you feel? What's your What's your pain level? <laughs> I think for me, I just it's like raw pain and shock, and like pain level is like unbearable <laughs> mm -hmm. how would you treat it david mentions yeah i'm trying to even treat it himself um because he's you know there's a sense of urgency um, 
how might you, how might others treat it or get help, I guess. <laughs> Well, mine is a gash in my arm, and I can't fix it. It's too big for a Band-Aid, so I have to go to the urgent care and get professional help, mm -hmm. wow. see a doctor or a nurse. Seek medical treatment from the ER, the ER, urgent care. What would happen if you ignored this deep cut or if you left it untreated? Well, you can definitely have repercussions with that infection. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a deep cut where your one of your arteries are hit and you're going to bleed out, you can go into shock, mm -hmm. and uh, you won't have the mental capacity to even find help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How long would you think it would take to heal? I'm not in the medical field, but I've seen things that have been um, that people have had, and it's it takes a long time, mm -hmm. long time to heal. And there's complications with that healing process because, um, yeah, if you get sepsis, if you have other organs that starts to um, shut down then you're dealing with other areas of your body being affected by that one wound that you didn't take care of mm -hmm. thank you and then how about a scar do you think it will leave a scar anyone <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yeah. Yeah, most likely if it was a deep cut, it's going to leave stitch marks or something. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Um, DJ, I'm going to ask you to share screen and show us kind of what the participants share. And um, so that was our physical wounds column. And I'd like for us to kind of go line by line and look at heart wounds. Think about so we said bleeding, panic. Would it be the same or different for a heart wound or emotional wounds? Um, and if it's different, how so? And DJ, if you could continue scribing, thank you. So let's start with the first one. There's let's start with bleeding. So it's visible. The physical wound is visible. Um, is it the same for a heart for heart wounds? I would imagine so, because even though it's not something we see with our eyes, um, well, actually, it could be something that we saw with our eyes. Um, so heart wounds can be affected by um, an act of violence or um, something that was done onto you that you did not ask or give permission. Mm -hmm. for and um so i think the bleeding part um it's almost like the emotional disturbance that you feel when something like that happens to you and thus panic which could come out as um anxiety Mm -hmm. um, and then, then you start to see it visibly within your own actions why you're replaying that same scene over and over again almost like the blood is still continuously um, pouring out thank you David yes absolutely I think heart wounds can be visible it might not be blood but I think they manifest in other ways I mean I talked about the behavioral kind of ways that um like a kind of emotionally tense or like verbally abusive environment can lead to yeah different different um heart wounds and they can manifest in different ways 
Um, let's let's skip ahead to seeking medical treatment, going to the ER, urgent care. Um, is that something? Is that same or different for heart? And any anyone can chime in. I think it's the same, but it's how we view it is not the same. Okay. In other words, the physical wound, we definitely know that there is a process in which you're going to be able to get that help. Mm -hmm. But with heart wounds, it's so unseen that you often wonder, like, who's going to be able to stop that feeling or mm -hmm. um, memory that's plaguing your heart over and over again. So the difference in seeking medical help is far more difficult in a heart wound situation. Yeah, it might not be as clear cut who to turn to, who or what resources to turn to in that time. But hopefully um, there will be a, like a pursuit of some kind of care for what you were sensing in your heart. Um, how about if we leave a heart wound untreated? Um, will there be infection? Does it lead to further further harm or problems? one way of how it bleeds is is that it bleeds into your relationships mm. it affects yeah. how you understand your relationship with other people and yeah i'm not sure that's part of the coping or or whatnot but it if it's untreated then it bleeds into the relationships with because over that you knowing yeah. um Yes, and you know, you were sharing, thank you, Christopher, sharing that just reminded me of, of just what I had shared in the beginning with my own story, seeing that blaming behavior and realizing, okay, my kids are still young, I don't know what's going on, but or, you know, later down the road, they're going to know, and this was such something that I felt like was going to bleed, and well, it was already bleeding into my relationship with my husband, but I really didn't want it to affect my kids and so really wanting to to yeah seek treatment for it or or get help and well for me it was turning to turning to god and for healing um how about takes a long time to heal do heart wound is that the same or different for heart It feels like know. it could take longer to heal. Yeah. Because um, heart wounds and memories and traumas have that memory aspect. Whereas a physical scar, you know, sometimes that heals in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. But if it's a broken bone, that could take maybe a month or two. But the healing process of heart wounds, it, it can take a lot longer for different reasons. Because it involves memory and having to reframe and having to take it slower. Thanks, Jim. And then lastly, will heart wounds leave? Could they? Could heart wounds leave a scar? I think so. I think absolutely, it will leave a scar because. Um, anything that might trigger uh, something that reminds you or makes it familiar to what um, you've been going through in the healing process can remind you that, yeah, I remember I went through that or that was me. And um, yeah, the scars are definitely still there. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for engaging and participating in this discussion and activity. Really, the point of this exercise is to show us that when we have a physical wound and it's bleeding out, um, there's a real sense of urgency, and we most likely are going to do something about it. Um, but it's really interesting to consider heart wounds. And I wonder how many of us, when we have a heart or emotional wound, actually do something about it. Or how long do we wait before we actually do something about it? Um, yeah, and so it's just intended to kind of get us just to stir up conversation around um, just becoming more aware of our heart wounds um, and, and seeking and healing with them. So um, I want to just conclude. Thank you again so much. And DJ, you could, yeah. Um, I just want to conclude by saying in, in this, you know, in healing groups, this ministry, um, we always keep in mind that Jesus, of course, is the healer. Um, the facilitator is really just the hands and feet. And, and as a facilitator, I really want to be faithful in facilitating the discussions and helping manage the group. But um, I always believe God's the one that brings people to the groups, and he's the one that does the healing. Um, I just want to share from my heart just what I love the most about healing groups ministry um, is that, um, you know, in any form, whether I am um, facilitating uh, formally facilitating a healing group online or in person, or whether I'm using the tools and principles, um, seeing conversation with my neighbor who might not even know Jesus, <laughs> um, or with friends or with my family members, I really feel like the end goal is not even just the healing. I mean, I absolutely pray and hope that every participate, participant in the healing groups receive healing in Jesus. but. Um, I, but through that healing, I think what I really, really desire and I feel like is the heart of the father is that they would encounter Jesus. Um, they would encounter Jesus's love for them. They would sense his presence. Um, and that these, these experiences, like tangible experiences of God's love will strengthen their relationship with God. Um, because you know, our healing groups only last like six to seven weeks. And long after these healing groups end, my hope and desire is that it's that relationship with God that will sustain them, you know, because God's the one that's going to continue to heal them and continue to meet them. Um, we only had like, have like 12 contact hours together in the healing group. Um, but even when we're not meeting in the healing group um, and long after, that's what, um, you know, what I feel like is really the beauty of what healing groups allow, you know, give space to happen and that that can continue on. Um, and remember, this is only one of many resources. This is the one I'm very familiar with and um, just have just been so blessed and um, passionate about, but, um, you know, I'm sure in the in the months to come, there will be other resources that are introduced. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you all. <clears throat> and then um, we want to invite you, each of you, um, and anyone else. You you can feel free to share this invitation with anyone else you think might be interested. But we will be offering a healing group online. Um, here are the dates. The start date is October 30th. Um, we'll be meeting Wednesday evenings, 5.30 to 7.30. West Coast time, 8.30 to 10.30. East Coast, um, we'll be skipping the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Um, it'll be on Zoom. And then, um, DJ, if you want to drop that link into the chat, and I'm sure it'll be emailed out as well. And I also want to introduce my co-facilitator who has joined our, our group, Mira Falcone. She'll be um, co-facilitating the group with me. And um, yes, if, whether you're listening to this as a recording or, uh, you know, live with us tonight, um, yeah, we welcome you guys to join. Just 
I say, give it a try. <laughs> um, join and see, see what God will do. I always encourage people to join healing groups, not even with the mindset of, hey, I'm going to bring this to my church or I'm going to launch a ministry um, in this such and such an organization, but really with, hey, let's see what God will do in my own heart. What will he bring to the surface? Um, you know, you know, where are the areas of healing he wants to do in my own heart? Anyway, that's that's all from me. Thank you again. And I'll turn it over to DJ. Well, thank you, Carissa, for the warm uh, introduction and invitation to healing groups. Again, this is available to anyone in your church, anywhere in the country, or even internationally, if you can sync up on the time zone, Zoom is available around the world. And uh, this is a very powerful experience for heart wounds. Thank you, Carissa and Mira, for making yourself available to serve people in this way. Uh, I've gone through a healing group myself, and it's a uh, very meaningful and time of healing. And I think uh, all of us going through the challenges of life experience different heart wounds in different ways, whether it's from childhood or recent things. You mentioned grief was something that we process, and that's something uh, none of us can avoid. It's, it's part of the circle of life, if you will. So this is a tremendous opportunity. It's freely available. Starts end of October. So we've got a month to get the word out. Mm -hmm. So for the recording, the link, registration link is go.catalystwa.org slash healing. So that will be in the YouTube video description. And Catalyst hosts these webinars every month in the year of 2024. You can watch previous episodes at Catalyst wa.org slash events. So thank you for watching this webinar. Uh, please consider prayerfully to join this healing group and invite others that can experience the healing of Jesus.